Continuing to work on simplifying algebraic expressions, in this video we'll look at how to deal with division and fractions. So an important operation that we'll often come across is reducing fractions to their simplest form. And this involves essentially cancelling common factors. There can be other steps involved as well though. What we're going to be doing is trying to divide the numerator and the denominator by all factors that appear in both. In other words, something simple like this, we'd start with AD over BD, noticing that there's a D on the top and on the, on the bottom, and that they're both factors in products. We can cancel them out and reduce this fraction to A over B. Now this is very, very important that we can only cancel the, the, these factors in products. We can't do it when we have something like this, where D appears as a term in a sum. A plus D over B plus D is not equal to A over B. You can only do it when they're multiplied top and bottom. So a few other rules that can help you out when we're trying to divide and simplify our algebraic expressions with fractions. We need to keep in mind that fractions are equal, A over B, C over D, if and only if we could also write AD equal to BC. We can also use this idea of moving the negative. If there's a negative on the bottom, it's the same as if it was on the top, and it's the same as if it was out the front of the entire fraction. All those symbols, all those expressions there mean the same thing. We can cancel negatives. If we've got a negative top and bottom, we don't need them. It's the same as positive over the positive. For some t uh, Sometimes, for some reasons, that might seem strange at the moment, you can introduce those negatives back in to help you cancel other things. It's also important to know about inverse relationships. A times A inverse is equal to A inverse times A is equal to one. And we'll see why that's important later. We often call that A to the minus one power the reciprocal of A. Sometimes we call it the inverse of A. It's also sometimes useful to recognize the equivalence of these three statements. The fraction A over B, the division A divided by B, and the product a times b to the minus one. All of those mean the same thing. And sometimes writing these in different ways can help us see things and figure out how to cancel things more effectively. So let's have a look at a couple of examples here. Now sometimes here we're gonna be using uh, sort of, I guess you might call it common sense of dividing numbers. Sometimes we'll be using index laws. So if you haven't seen the index laws, go back and check out the video on that. Let's have a look first at a. We've got 2x to the 3 over 4x squared. Now I'm going to use a little bit of my understanding of fractions. I know that 2 is on the top, and down here I've got 4, which is 2 times 2. So I can cancel the top 2 and one of those bottom 2s. I'm going to be left with a 2 down there. Now I've got an x cubed and an x squared. Now off to the side here, I'm going to remember my index laws, and they say that that's x to the 3 minus 2 is x to the 1, or just x. So I can actually write this as, in its simplified form, x over 2. Okay, part b, we have to simplify 16xyz over 48y squared z cubed. I'm going to write this one out in a little bit more detail. 16 divided by 48, first of all I remember that that I can do on my calculator if I like, or I know it, it's going to be 1 over 3. So we've got 1 over 3, and then I'm going to do my index laws stuff. I've got an x here, but no x is on the bottom, so I'll just leave that as an x. I've got y to the 1 on the top. Remember that there's a little 1 there. There's one there for z as well. y to the 1 on the top and y to the 2 on the bottom. My index laws say that's y to the 1 minus 2. Similarly, z to the 1 minus 3. Now I simplify those, and I've got 1 on 3, x, y to the minus 1, and z to the minus 2. We can leave it like that. I didn't specify how to write the final result, or if you like, you could write x over 3y z squared. In part c, we've got 3 times a minus 4, b squared, c, all over 9b, a minus 4. Now you could write this in a similar way to the previous example, part b, but I'm going to do this one with a little bit of cancelling on the fly, for those of you who are more comfortable with that. First of all, notice we've got a 3 on the top and a 9 on the bottom. We can cancel the 3 there and one of the 3's, which is a factor of 9, to leave us with a 3 on the bottom, because 9 is 3 times 3. And we've also got a b on the bottom and a b squared on the top. We can cancel one of those with one of these up the top, 
leaving us with b to the 1. There's no c's top or bottom, but the one thing that might not stick out to you is that we've got a minus 4. Now a minus 4 at first seems like a difference, but when it's put inside brackets and used as a factor to multiply by 3, b squared and c, it becomes a factor in a product. So we're allowed to cancel it, provided we cancel that whole bracketed term. It appears on the top and the bottom, so I'm going to do that and cancel that whole piece out. Now we need to carefully clean up what we've got left over. 3 and a minus 4 are gone, but b and c are still there on the top. On the bottom, all we're left with is the 3. So our final result is bc over 3. In the final part of this example, we're asked to simplify 2m squared by 6m to the minus 1. There's a couple of ways we could go about this, but I'm going to do this one by expanding in that minus 1 power using my index laws. So I'll have 6 to the minus 1 and m to the minus 1. And now I can combine all these pieces. I'll have 2, m to the 2 minus 1 is just m, and then that 6 to the minus 1 is going to go down to the bottom. And finally cleaning it up, I'll cancel the common factor of 2 to leave me with m over 3. Okay, so in this video we've seen how to, or what defines common factors and reciprocals. And we've also looked at some examples on how to simplify algebraic expressions that involve fractions and division.